Johnny, did you know Car and Classic now does online auctions? Yes. Did you know each Car and Classic auction includes professional photos and a description of your car and offers a secure payment service? Yes. Did you use Car and Classic online auctions to sell your chimney? Yes. Did you find the process quick and easy? Yes. Did you once eat too many baked potatoes and then run over yourself? No. You're thinking of Brian Harvey off of E17. Oh, yeah. Smith & Sniff is sponsored by Car & Classic. To find out more about online auctions, visit carandclassic.com. I'm Richard Porter. I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith & Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and many other things. In the room. Together. In the room together. Well, this is a nice rustic room that we're in. Um, Mm. And I was going to talk about not the room... Not the room. No, I was going to talk about DIY Ad Blue. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can already guess where this is going, but, well, but go on. I had this ideal as I ideal. I had this ideal. I, yeah, so ideal. <laughs> very idea. I brought, I brought some West Country with me. I, I had this you. idea on the way up that a friend of mine recently bought a diesel car that needs Ad Blue. Right. And it's really annoyed him because he just hadn't factored in the complexity of it. It's. It's. I think. Have I ever had a car with Ad Blue? I've never had an Ad Blue car. I feel like Ad Blue in cars is like um, rinse aid in dishwashers. They're very needy for it. They're yeah. quite thirsty for it. Can I have some more? Can I have some more? What, what, I just gave you some. What the yeah. fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. Like a druggie. Yeah. 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 Because you. Yes. Anyway, do it yourself, Ad Blue. Yeah. So lot trucks. Mm. Obviously, running a lot all mm. the time. Yeah. I bet a lot of truckers get dehydrated because they don't want to stop because they've got to keep going yeah so therefore they don't drink enough water oh so this could be a two-stage campaign so i think i read the other week about james dyson that he doesn't like to just use loos that other people use so at his office he's got a private loo what but if he visits another dyson site where he doesn't have a private loo that no one else can use he just doesn't drink anything all day so that he doesn't have to well even a even a- so it's alleged that's bonkers. I know, it's well, right. I did. well, also, this is one of his major sites in Singapore where it's incredibly hot and humid a lot of the time. So if he's like, no, it's fine, I just won't drink anything all day. Oh, no, you'd have the, the mother of migraines. <laughs> exactly. You could have the mother of... He basically, he can only see through thin, tiny tunnels. <laughs> so he can't actually, can't actually make any decisions because he can't see anything. What do you think of this new design for a vacuum cleaner or one of those hand dryers that makes an old man fall over? <laughs> yeah, it looks great to me. That's how he signs he it signed, off. He signs it off too soon crushing migraine and he couldn't actually concentrate <laughs> and that's why they nearly signed the car off yeah but he came in all uh, just then, ratty and he just went Do you know yeah. what I'm bored of this I've spent too much it's nowhere near finished just end it all now oh oh I thought it might be the other way around he's go- they keep going are you sure it's a good idea and he's like yes 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 it's a good idea it's a good idea and he's really and on the way home he stopped at a petrol station bought a big bottle of Ribena <laughs> glugged it down and he's suddenly like Oh my God, making a car is a terrible idea. This is a foolish venture. Yeah. I'm going to carry on destroying people's lives in Jen's toilet. Yes, so they have it's a terrible it's accident. It's or they... very hard to turn a profit on a car, whereas it is quite profitable to make your granddad break his hip <laughs> in a public lavatory. So. If you've just tuned into this and you've never heard of this podcast before, you're thinking, this is not about cars. No, um, it seems to be touching on hand dryers for some reason. Well, um, But... My the point about my ad blue is we hydrate truckers. We encourage them to drink mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. of water. Mm-hmm. It's a natural way to look after your body, perhaps lose weight even. Is it okay? Yeah. Well, you you just constantly flushing your kidneys, aren't you? Just constantly. Oh, okay. Just flushing. <laughs> just like constantly flushing <laughs> yeah. yourself out. Yeah. It's the it's old school detox. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And then and then but you 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 can use you sort of have a urinal coupled up to the. <laughs> Cab. Oh, so you leave. You can leave the truck on cruise control, and you don't have to move from your seat. It's all there, yeah. and it automatically goes into a vat that mixes it with some key other chemicals that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> Do continue, you Doctor. Can, I'm fascinated yeah, by this. Good to see. Professor Smith continues his <laughs> some other chemicals. As, as Jennifer Aniston would say, here comes the science. Long, <laughs> long pause. Johnny's got I nothing to I believe it mixes with Kiora. No. Like, you know, I, I mean, that, which already looks a bit like super dehydrated. No, but this wind. is great because as they drive along, they're hydrating. They're, they don't have to stop for a whaz. And the truck's being fed the necessary chemicals for it to not blast out too much horrible stuff. So for people who think we're dicking around, this is true that Ad Blue is, is urea. Well, I think it's synthetic, isn't it? But I think it's, it's, it's urea is what 
it's mimicking, which is yeah. in piss. But I, I don't know. If there, there must be a percentage of... Outside. Outside. It's a guy. It's actually snowing. We're doing this podcast in snow. It is snow. It's spring. really snowing, and there's someone going around in a John Deere Gator in a spirited oh, way. Well, they're coming off, aren't they? Straight oh, yeah. Right? Ozzy Osbourne style. Oh, yeah. Ooh, we oh. haven't talked about Ozzy Osbourne's quad bike being for sale. No. Was, it, is, a, was it a Banshee? I think so. I yeah, th- no. Oh, I'm and it was on. <laughs> it, was, it was on Car and Classic the week after we talked about, I think, Ozzy Osbourne having the familiar terrible uh, tank slap neck snap accident yeah, I can't freaking find but yet, of course I can't find it I can never find anything when I want to off find of car it. in classic and it was uh, amazing uh, um, amazing oh uh, well maybe should I just should I just uh, I should just search for it shouldn't I or just search it? for it because I'm pretty sure that nobody used it after Ozzy had his accident I think just I'm surprised he didn't like set fire to it in some sort of Viking burial oh of course I'm not on the internet so that's not going to be you on the internet <clears throat> anyway, it might not be there anymore, but I, th- I think this was up. So a listener who I'd like to thank for this, but I can't find their email. Uh, I'll, I'll dig it out. I'll um, dig it out. Hang on. Alerted to this that Ozzy Osbourne's old quad bike, the one he famously flipped over and hurt himself on, yeah, is so ideal for anyone hoping to open a macabre quad bike museum. This is the one that Rick Mail came off. What the same? What is it going to be like, John F. Kennedy's presidential limousine? Oh, what they rebuilt it. I still can't. I still to this day can't believe that they didn't just crush it and no, get rid. No, they it's, kept it's, the damn thing going. It's slightly yeah. macabre, isn't it? It's well, it so, is. You'd understand it if it was a country that couldn't afford to do that, but the US has largesse and could go. Our president was assassinated in this car. Yeah, let's just destroy it. It just doesn't make but any sense. No, let's it, just hose it out and then the next president can use it. Oh, right. we found it. X, here we go, on Car in Classic. It, I think the auction has now, yeah, it ended on the December the 1st. Okay. Um, 1996. Ozzy Oz, ex Ozzy Osbourne, okay. Yamaha Banshee. Because <laughs> you should remember that. The key parts of the description look, bullet point, the vehicle he broke several ribs on. <laughs> Next bullet point, left untouched since the accident. <laughs> Next bullet point, running condition. Next bullet point, a rare collectible. And it is, I mean, it's a 352 stroke um, Banshee. I think they were really Larry. <laughs> he probably had no previous quad bike experience. No. And he went, oh, well, I'll just... That, that one looks pretty cool. Well, yeah. it, is, it is cool. Have, it's also I've very powerful. a lot to drink and or some quaaludes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Good 70s drug. And uh, I'm going to go and ride it down a hill. Yeah. The, the, Sideways. The 352 it. stroke was earned its title King of the Dunes due to its power and off-road only nature. Oh. Not to be messed with. And this was put to the test by the previous owners uh, r- rather in- infamously. He fell off this very quad bike, cracking a vertebrae, breaking eight ribs and his collarbone, and left him unconscious. And, no. he, and he even stopped breathing for a while, but this did not stop the <laughs> Prince yeah. of Darkness. Over the past 20 years, the quad has been left untouched as part of his estate. Oh, wow, so he kept it. Mm. He didn't just get rid, put it on, ca- take it to cash converters and just get, 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 <laughs> rid, of, are, yeah. get rid of this yeah. fucking thing yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Wow. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so I want to know if anybody on this uh, listening to this cast off of this cast bought it or knew somebody that oh, bought it. Yeah. Uh, what's going to happen like to the ex Aussie ex Banshee? <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, no, damage present from Aussie's crash condition in the part of the condition report. Didn't yeah? Weren't they saying also he'd scratched off some of the lettering? So it said it said funny decal wordplay. I think it says ha ha or something instead of Yamaha, so, <clears> which <throat> would be I don't know. How you, oh well, I suppose you could peel them off. I don't know. We'll put the link in there. I mean, it's obviously it's already sold. It's yeah. sold for ten and a half thousand quid. Wow. Yeah. So I wonder what it'd be worth if it hadn't almost killed a rock star. What? The person who sold oh, it is gambling, based in Gambling Game, which is one of the play, ne, quite near that. Um, Wendon Wen, Zambo. Wendon Zambo. <laughs> <laughs> Wendon Zambo. <laughs> Wendon Zambo. It's Please the, don't ask me what I did in the 80s. It's the end of the road for you guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> Well, anyway, there we go. So that's uh, Smith and Stiff, always ahead of the news. Uh, if you want to buy Ozzy Osbourne's old quad bike, you can't. It's already sold. But if you did buy it, please get in touch because um, we'd love to hear from you. Now, I did a thing yesterday, um, quite embarrassingly. I got into a car and had to stop and fill up with fuel. But I hadn't made a note of which side the filler flap was. Ah. And it's my own frigging car. Which car? The Honda Element. 
Ah, because the whole guess. Go, you guess which side. Right. It's a Japanese car. Yes. Traditionally, the filler would be on the passenger side. Yeah. Curbside for right-hand drive cars. However, it was designed in America for Americans. But they would keep it on that side because Americans like convenience. They would like to get out and the flat to be there right by the driver's door. So so it's on the passenger side. It is. Hey. However, mm. the little logo on the dashboard mm. has it has has the, the fuel uh, pump mm. next to the fuel gauge has the, the nozzle going in on the right. Oh, but that's just coincidence, isn't it? That was that they, because there was a meme went round a while ago that went, "Did you know you could tell?" Well, it, it normally like, is. No, but that's easy. They put the arrow, don't they? Put the little arrow. I didn't. I don't have an arrow. Well, on I think bastard. Ford started putting the arrow. I think it was that was a Ford. In so the I well, I was tired. I would just finished a job. Mm. And oh, did you do mm, the stretch? I might have been hungover, <laughs> but I I was. What I did was I pulled up at the pub, got out, instantly realised what I'd done, mm. swore a little bit, mm. looked around. And as I was looking around, a lady on the other side of the pumps who'd already got in her car had done the same thing. Oh. We locked eyes. <laughs> she was in a Mazda 2 Demio. Was it the Demio? The, the boxy one. The boxy Mazda 2. It, don't, it wasn't. Well, there was, there's a boxy Mazda 2 and there's a Demio was before that. But Well, it's really boxy and small. It might have been a Mazda 2 then. Okay, and she looked at me and I looked at her and we, we both did the same thing. It was like, should we just... No. Like, I'll, do, I'll do it like this on, on the microphone because we don't say it. We go... Mm. Mm. The other way now. The other way now. Mm. And she went, yeah, I'll go to you and you go to me. And we did it. Mm. And then um, as I was filling up, I sort of smiled at her and did the thumbs up. We didn't actually talk. And a guy pulled in in front of me in a Suzuki Carry, oh. a small van. Mm. Don't see him around so much anymore. No. But this is where the saga gets interesting. <laughs> so I fill up and then I, I mess around with something. I can't remember what. And then I go and pay. Oh, I had litter to put in the bins. Mm -hmm. I wanted to empty my car of road mm. food. Textbook. You know the rules. And as I came out, I realised that dude's still filling the Suzuki Carry. It, can't have, it hasn't got like a Dakar <laughs> endurance <laughs> tank. what? Well, <laughs> They're filling the load space. Well, that's why I think, so I'm like, it's a small van. Right? They're 1.3. Yeah. That's got to have like a 30 litre tank on well, it. Yeah, something. it turns out, it turns out he had 10 gallon cans oh. lined up. Oh my God. He'd been filling one and putting it in, taking the other one out, filling one, putting it back in. The side door was open. It had 10 gallons of... Shitting heck. So either he was going on the Dakar. Yeah. <laughs> or, or he ran a strimmer business. <laughs> or, I don't actually know. Or he's planning to... I commit a horrendous act of arson. Well, well hopefully not. Hopefully not that, that dark. What if they, those Suzuki carries famously unstable vans <laughs> and he's going to fill it with frigging... It was full of petrol. It Ten gallons It was of full. Loose petrol. Ten gallon Lovely cans. Six. I was thinking... Yeah, it's a lot of fuel. I wouldn't dare touch the brakes. Never mind go around a corner. Bloody hell. Yeah, tell me oh, about if it. if you stuck it in a ditch? Well, but you would never know. It would all atomise. <laughs> <laughs> you would never <laughs> know. It would be one of those fires where they have to evacuate streets and things. Yeah. yeah all the the understeery carry. Uh, oh, my God. Up, yeah, so just all of the fuel going into How the... Old? Imagine the smell in there as well. Yeah. Because he would have splashed it. He looked like, I'm not going to say a doddery old man, but he was no. of an age where he probably didn't, didn't wipe the sides of the can and probably a little bit of oversplash <laughs> around the edges. You know what I mean. <laughs> on the rim of the, of the, of the can. Well, yeah, because also filling one of those cans is, always feels a bit perilous, doesn't it? It's well, it's just, awful. It's just not not comfortable experience. You get the can, you get the clickety-click, you get the clickety-click on the nozzle. Yeah, and you go so a little bit higher. I'm just going to do it a bit more. A little bit higher. A little bit, oh, no, it's gone over the edge. And what, what do you then do? What do you then do? Uh, <laughs> don't know. I, I don't know, mate. Now, here's something that I saw uh, last week that I wanted to mention to you, because it was weird, uh, in the car park of a and q Okay. And it was a damp day. And this time of year, you know, a damp day sprays muck on cars. Cars just get mucky, don't they? Road film. Unspecified grey road muck. Yeah, awful. Don't fight it. It's just a fact of this time of year. Yeah. Ideally, you want your car detailed first, so it just, it beads. Beads. And can't adhere to anything. Well, I uh, parked up and I popped into B&Q with my kids just to go and grab something. Came back just as a man had pulled in in a car... And not a goat. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was going to say that. I realised. No, I, I Lock the goat by the mouth yeah. to the bicycle area. <laughs> so don't eat anything. Uh, 
Uh, so this bloke had pulled in. I sort of saw at the car, he was he got out, and but then we was, I was walking across the car park quite slowly because we had my children with me. So I had time to sort of then see him, and he he was then he got in the boot, and his presumed wife and a teenage daughter got out, and then were standing around, and he got out of the boot, car cleaning items. Oh, and he was wiping off the bodywork of the car. What in the car park? In the car park. What, what were the other two doing? Standing there as if this is just a normal thing. Oh my gosh! You know, there might have been a bit of teenage daughter eye rolling, but the wife sort of was just standing there. And they were both, but they were standing there. They didn't even sort of go, "We'll see you in there." They stood and they waited, and he was he mid-journey was, detailing. Yes, but the car was. Oh, I bet it was something cheap. I it bet was, it was a brand new cheap car, like an MG3. Ooh, good guess. No, it was an <laughs> outgoing shape Honda Civic. Ooh. White. 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 So, of course, this time of year, white car, it is a nightmare to keep oh, it clean. But this parents. man's determination to keep it clean. And I was just like, is he doing this after every journey? Like, it's just tiresome. Can we go to B&Q, Keith, and get some more some more paint? And I need a rug. And, oh, is, uh, do, uh, do we have to? Mm, I've had a look outside. I don't want to get the Civic. He's dirty. the guy. Who it's has... a Civic, Keith. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's right. He's the guy that keeps it in the garage, even though it's very tight. It's a single garage. It's a real yeah. rigmarole to get it out. Oh, he's carpeted the walls. He's so he carpeted. ding the doors when he opens them. That's what I was about to say. There's oh. three types of carpet there. He's rescued yeah. them from neighbouring skips. <laughs> and he, over the, over the last decade or more, yeah. and he's gone, I'm not, or this adds, not only adds warmth to the garage in winter, mm. but protection over all angles so mm. I can drive in slightly badly and it's okay. Would he have a tennis ball hanging from the ceiling that touches the windscreen at the precise point he needs to stop? You, I, I aspire to having that. I would love. My uncle had that. You've got to calibrate it carefully, though. Oh damn! You've got to. I mean, and, and if anybody moves it for a joke, that's yeah, not a joke. I could really not a joke. You could put it right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> tennis ball moving shenanigans. <laughs> Which, Does anybody still do the tennis ball hanging from the I don't know. Well, there's another one for listeners. It's, 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 if you or someone you know still has a tennis ball hanging from the roof, they go, people don't put cars in garages anymore, though, do they? No. That's the thing. no so, and, and, but cars don't... But they sort of... We, we have covered this before. Cars do rot, but mm. you, they invisibly rot. So that because of all the mm. plastic trim and cladding, the yeah. only person that sees the rot is the MOT tester. Yeah. No one else sees the rot. Yeah, true. And... Uh, I'm now annoyed with myself because I recently, due to house moving, had to skip some things, mm. uh, which I might have mentioned. And I realised I skipped a very sun-damaged swing ball, oh. which I could have repurposed because a... the cord and the ball Perfect. were still good. Shit. Bollocks. I'm going to have to run down to the landfill site in the vain hope. <laughs> but are you, you're not using your garage at the moment because it's full of stuff. It's full of stuff. Yeah. I've got a, I'm borrowing a corner of a barn for important... <laughs> Stuff for important dry storage. Your newspaper of, collection. Yes, no, no, of, of 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 like the old cars which must be kept. Oh, must be kept dry. Okay, but cars which I'd quite like to keep dry, but they 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 don't need to be kept dry. There. Hang on. So how many cars on your drive at the moment? <clears throat> I keep one outside the office, and I keep one on the drive at home, and I circulate them. Oh, okay. Yeah. But those are the Hondas. Those are the Hondas. Okay. Yeah. But the inside's not going to rust because it is aluminium, aluminium. even though it, it leaks at the moment, which oh. is very inconvenient. Does it? Yeah. Leaks into the cabin? Yeah. Oh, that's annoying. So the driver's side footwell has got a squish to it. And, it's, it's, oh, and the problem is, how, this is a question for listeners. How do you dry a car out if you don't have like a heated garage yes. in winter? Yes. How do you dry a car out? Um, you could take everything out of it. Take everything else. I suppose you could do an extremely dodgy extension lead and then... Fan, fan heater. heater. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like it's how you'd synthesise slight danger in a laboratory. It's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a crap episode of casualty. No, it'll be fine. Isn't the extension lead going through a puddle? No, no. it's okay. Isn't that a 100 metre extension lead plugged into another 100 yes. metre <laughs> extension lead? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, yes, you're absolutely uh, right. It'll yeah. be fine. It's not much of a draw Look, on the grid. There was nowhere to park outside the house. The car is down the street outside, like five <laughs> doors down. So I've had to daisy chain... <laughs> All of, the, all of the four gang extensions in our house together. And yes, some of them are sitting in puddles. And yes, it is drizzling again. Can, Don't at, worry. And at night, people are going, are those, is that Christmas lights? No, it's just a glowing extension <laughs> that's just yeah. fizzing quietly in a puddle. What could possibly go wrong? What's that smell? Well, unfortunately, uh, he's left the fan heater running too long and the dashboard of his car's melted. <laughs> it's bowing. <laughs> it's all just 
got like glue beads. <laughs> <laughs> it now that's looks like, what you have to do no, it now looks like a, f- a first gen Ford ca dash but it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't originally <laughs> like that that sort of wrapper I still quite like the dash design of that yeah it's good that, it's good I was thinking about cars again people when we, when we was a couple of weeks ago we talked about cars and we were yeah. calling them KAs and we were because I still can't decide well so, but somebody uh, I can't remember I still, in someone went stop saying that you sound stupid to say car it's like, and then somebody, I think it was on social media actually, because somebody else went, Well, I used to work at a Ford garage and you couldn't say car because it was very confusing. Yeah. Have you sold that car? Which one? Yeah. The car. The car. We've got lots of them. We're a garage. So would they refer to it as a car or a KA? KA, I think. Was right. the industry. Because I'd never heard KA until I think I heard it from sort of like how Ford say it. Hmm. So I mean, who, look, who, is it what's right and what's wrong? Is it tomato, tomato? I don't know. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. Well, the whole fucking thing ah, off. that's it um, so I there's something else I was going to mention to you what was it oh yeah I know I was behind a Vauxhall Aguila oh Aguila which is a Suzuki uh, Wagoner isn't yes it? it is yes yeah a Rick, a Rick Wagoner Rick Wagoner yeah and the Aguila's I think only the Wagoner has that towel rail screwed to the boot. Yes, it does. Which you're just going is it to chrome? Say. Yeah. It is, is it? It's, just, it's a B&Q towel rail. Or one of those rails that helps infirm people off the yeah. toilet. Yes. You know, once they've gone onto the toilet, they're like, I can't get back off for that help. Can't get off, but it's okay, because I parked my Wagoner in the bathroom, so I can just... Uh, yeah, well, it's so narrow, it'll fit through the yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, that's why they're so narrow. It's a good yeah, thing. It's through the patio house. doors. But I was, I was following this Aquila. I suddenly noticed the exhaust on it. It's got the smallest exhaust. Yeah. You could also see it comes from sort of up high down and then just drops to pop out through the bumper aperture. It, do- it does. But <clears throat> it does. Just, it looked to me like, I was thinking, <clears throat> is there a car? Because obviously you get like, you know, lawn mowers and shit. Oh, which have, have tiny, tiny little, tiny, just little, tiny little, sort tiny of dicks. Cat anus exhaust yeah. somewhere. But yeah. a car that has a really small exhaust on it. Is there anything smaller than a Gila? It's just it's like... The <clears throat> the Fiat 126 has a crimped tip. Oh, yes. It has a crimpy, crimpy tip. Because, of course, the engine's at the back, there's not a lot of room no, no. for a silencer. So just as a sort of last minute, it's just quite quiet <laughs> it down. They just crimp the tip. But couldn't that just risk making it go... <laughs> so it sounds a bit like tromboni, yeah. then, isn't it? <laughs> What's it called? Em- Embrochet? Oh, embouchet? The, 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 the thing you have to do with your mouth. What are you pursing? Is it pursing you, of the lips? I think it's embouchet. It's all right. In. Um, <coughs> if, you, if you want to contact us on this or any of the matters raised in this podcast, it's uh, hello at smithandsniff.com. Hello at smithandsniff.com. Hello, is it Smith and Sniff you're, you're looking, looking for? Because uh, I've so seen it in a crimp tailpipe. In, uh, uh, oh, someone, yeah, someone wrote in. Uh, last week before said uh, could you do a Christmas song yeah but they used the wrong email address so no we can't but I, I did want to sit down and really craft out some good lyrics uh, and I thought well wh- which one what's the logical well we know what the logical song would be it'd be driving home for Christmas wouldn't it yeah but someone's already done that so we'd have to pay Chris Rea for to use it he's already done it oh couldn't we just change the lyrics I think the Remember was Chris still going to get cash Chris, from us? Chris would still like some cash from you for that, right. I would suspect. Well, what about if um, we just said we won't <clears> profit from this? We're just doing it for shit. <laughs> We're just doing it for shits and giggles, Chris. Okay? <laughs> when I say <laughs> shits... Go, well, I'm no copyright lawyer, but that sounds okay to me. <laughs> Knock yourselves out, lads. Do on the beach while you're at it. I like yeah, that we'll one. do that one, yeah. 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 Um, he, well, he, he'll be on his way now. He's been on his way for a while. He's been on his way since the end. Because I, had the, cause I, I know there's been many puns about this before, but I thought... He's left up north, yeah. right, mm. where he's from. Mm. He's going to London for a dinner event. But, and he knew this when he set off in his car. It's mm. a prestige car, but it's in limp home mode, and he just can't be asked <laughs> to get it reset. He needs an ECU flash, and he, he just can't be asked. So he's driving down at less than 40 miles an hour yeah. on the motorway. That reminds Because it's in limp, me, limp home mode. That reminds me, in fact, that uh, a, a patron of ours... Bindu, Bindu. Yes, Cannings. Cannings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Australia. Out of off of Australia, who's been in touch with us a few times before. Um, Bindu sent us a message about that the other day. What, limp home mode? Yeah, hang on. It's going to load this up. Here we go. Uh, he says, on the weekend, I had a car-based incident that made me think of a topic for the podcast. 
The topic being modern cars that could very easily be driven home going into sodding limp mode. <laughs> this came to mind when on the weekend my C55 had me stranded on the side of the road purely because of a misfire. The problem is that because of the misfire, the transmission threw an unexpected value code. Unexpected to, value, yeah. I love that. Due to the inconsistent torque coming from my now seven-cylinder Mercedes. Oh. If the car detects a misfire, it will shut down that cylinder altogether. Okay, so that's quite clever. I love that. The, 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 um, what was it? What value again did it say? Un- unexpected un- value. That's what happens in Microsoft Excel that you and I fear. Oh, yeah. It always says unexpected Oh, value. my God. And I- it has a percentage sign and an exclamation mark. Yeah. And you just go, I don't know what's yeah. going on. I oh, fucking Excel. I, I had a problem stop. with Excel earlier on. I was going to tell you about it, not on the podcast, but just it was just being a twat again. Like first of all, the first thing I thought was, oh, I must tell Johnny about uh, so I can we can further our mutual hatred of Rich, Excel. Rich and I have Excel <laughs> fever. Yes. We have okay. Excel. So I've entered these these amounts of nice. It's thirty pounds, forty seven pounds, thirty two pounds, and four pounds. Could you add that up for me, Excel? Yes. The answer is ninety seven million percent. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Why is it that? Um, Such a wanker. So yeah, Bindu says uh, if the uh, if the transmission throws this code, this unexpected value, it normally means the torque converter is shot, or that you have nearly zero transmission fluid, so the car, damn car won't leave first gear. Oh! Luckily, I had some spare spark plugs in the boot. I what? changed both on cylinder eight, twin spark engine, yeah, and was on my way. However, this has me thinking of all the times people have to get towed in what is really a perfectly drivable vehicle just because of the bloody computers. I bet this happens a lot. Uh, Have you driven very far on? Have you ever done like a limp home mode road trip? Mm. No, I don't think I have. I know. Is it as bad as a space saver road trip? I go for a space saver every time because you know the car's mechanically in rude health. And you might find a tyre shop somewhere. True. You can sort of wing it, even if you bought, I don't know, insert name of horrifically cheap tyre. <laughs> Ditch Kings. <laughs> yes, exactly. Something like that. Um, the, yeah, uh, whatever you call it. The ice no. Road, Ice Road have Warrior. You, have you done a Limp Home Odyssey then? I, <laughs> the Odyssey <laughs> of the Limp Home. Limp Home Were you mode. having to drive with the hazards on because you couldn't? Oh, yeah, oh, I've done one of them. That's textbook. Oh, shit, I've done one of them. Mm. Yeah, I've done one of them. I've done one of those. I've done an old school limp home mode where the brakes were binding. So oh. the car still had full torque, but it just couldn't push itself along because the brakes were hanging on. And oh, it was awful. It was so embarrassing. I had to do the hazards. <laughs> My brother told me the other day about a colleague of his who, for some reason, was driving a car with dual controls. <laughs> and, and But someone had thrown a bag into the footwell and it was, it was on the brake pedal. And they didn't notice until there was a smell. And they pulled into some services and the the discs were glowing red. <laughs> we're doing the dual control. So the passenger footwell was just telling it. Telling well, yeah, the, it's just basically the, there was someone just slightly applying the brakes. That's but. like a sort of schizophrenic car, isn't it? The one, the one footwell's going slow this day. Yeah, the the other going, footwell's no, going, go. I need power. <laughs> I need power. This is not a rolling burnout situation. Uh, this also reminds me that when I was little, my dad's told that Solara got jammed in first gear. <laughs> I just love the fact that your family car was a Or was it a second? I can't remember. It was a low gear. It <laughs> might have been second. Because first is so low and also vocal. Yeah. Very vocal. I'm thinking back because what happened is for some reason, I don't know why this happened. Like, I, I don't know why the gearbox went wrong. It was the linkage, I think. Something yeah. happened to the linkage and it just jammed fast. So it's like, you could start it, obviously, with the clutch in. Yeah. And then do a probably, if it was second or third, but a slightly smelly getaway. Yeah. I'm going to say it was second. <laughs> smelly getaway. And I'll tell you why it was second, because... You could um, drive it some distance. You could drive it. Yeah. Now, <laughs> rather than ask them to send a lorry to our house where the car was, <laughs> one evening, my dad drove... From where we lived in Wilmslow to uh, County Motors in Stockport. Okay, so what's that? Twenty miles? No. Fifteen? Ten. <laughs> ten. Ten. I just remember we just drove along very slowly with the hazards on. It's and then my mum and my brother met us there, to, and he left the car. The garage was closed. I don't know why, but he'd agreed to drop it off after He abandoned hours. it. Yeah. So we pulled in. 
Yeah. And he managed to pull into a space up against the wall, but that's it. Then the car is, you're going to have to push it out again. So then he, he, put, he wrote a note and taped it across the steering wheel that said, car jammed in gear, do not start without depressing clutch. Of course, yeah. Because otherwise someone might have just gone in and gone, move this fuck up. Oh, no, just, just lurched it straight to a brick wall. On choke. On choke. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I just remember driving uh, vividly because there's a long straight road. People who know this, the road between sort of Wilmslow and Hanford, there's a long straight sort of boulevardy type road, trees on either side. Yeah. And it's very wide and very, very straight. The Manchester Road out of Very, very wide. Very, 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 very straight. straight. We were going very, very slowly with the hazards on. Yes. Excuse me, yes, sir, have you been drinking? No. <clears throat> but the thing is, I would have been seven, maybe, at the time. And so it's all a bit of an adventure. I imagine that, it, for my dad, it was an incredible stress. It would and have an been teeth gnashing. His fucking Solara was <laughs> <laughs> And then he got it fixed. And then the gearbox started to play up again, and then he traded it in for another Solara. And and it was he was it was like thank God the salesman didn't take it for a test drive before offering the because it had a gearbox back. issue. Yeah, the gearboxes he... in those early Solaras were dog shit, and then I think in later ones it was slightly better. <laughs> I love the fact he went and bought another one though. I think he said, and any Solara enthusiast listening might be able to correct. They won't this. be listening. No, they they aren't there. <laughs> they aren't there. No. <laughs> But I think it was a different gearbox. I think it was a. It had been a Chrysler gearbox originally from uh, the original Alpine. Yeah. And then they put a Peugeot gearbox in it. Uh, okay. I think that was some claim that was made. Okay. And it was a better gearbox. Who knows if that's true? <sighs> you. I really want you to buy a Talbot Solara at some I point just, in your life. I mean, even if it's just for shits and giggles on this podcast. But the, this Richard, is the problem. By, if Car and Classic are listening, who, who I know do listen, <laughs> please find this man of shonky Solara. Oh, man. I don't... See, I don't want a Solara. What, because they're gash? Because I think they're... <laughs> I remember getting my, my godfather, my Uncle Alwyn. Yeah. He was always a Volvo man. Yeah. Always. And then... Did he buy from that dealership with the exceptionally long name in North Wales? Oh, he... Well, no, I think at that point... The one near Bangor. He would have done, because that's where he lives. He yeah. lives on the edge of Anglesey. He will have gone to that dealership. What's yeah. it, what, like, called Clan Fair Plus Queen? Oh, God, Volvo Limited. Yes. Well, it's still there, isn't it? It's still, is it? Yeah, it still oh, exists. I don't know. No, it still exists. Oh. Well, well I'll write the spelling in, in the show notes. Okay. Because it's exceptionally long. Yeah. In fact... You know what? Fuck this. You're going to look it up. I'm a responsible podcast. Well, I'll tell you. In the meantime, I'll tell you that my, my <clears throat> uncle Alwyn suddenly, for some reason, decided to buy a BMW. Get away! And he bought an E34 535i. What? Yeah. A real a real Vol- uh, BMW. That's a, yeah. That's yeah. A well, spin- this is when they were contemporary. I don't think it was new. It was second hand, but it was still mm-hmm. sort of, you know probably like a year or two old. Right. And uh, which is quite, you know, quite racy. I think, in fact, he then went back to Volvos, but what? Because it was too racy. Probably too racy, and um, I don't know. He likes a car. My uncle Alwyn. He, he, he might have enjoyed. Them. Oh, here we go. Rear wheel drive balance of E34. Oh. But um, but he. Uh, so I remember getting into his E34 out of my dad's Solara and thinking I'd gone deaf. <laughs> oh. T. Lon garage. Ah, but oh, I see. But look oh. at the name on the garage. That's the full spelling. Oh, that is that, yeah. Clan Fair Plus Queen of Garage and Robert Fantasilio Go Go Go. Yeah, that, that's where my uncle Alwyn lives. Well, okay, so that's his local garage. Yeah. So for the, for the benefit of listeners, let me spell the name of this garage to you. Well, it's the famous, it's the famously it's like the longest t- t- village name or town name in, in Britain, isn't it? It's, I'm sure it, it is. Yeah. Little church on the hill by a puddle, by a. By a broken Volvo. By next, broken to, by, next to by, Uncle Alwyn's. By a 30,000 mile. So it's double L A N F A I R P W L L G W Y N G Y L I G O G E R Y C H W Y R N D R O B W I L L I A N T Y S I L I O G O G G O C H. Oh, that's. I think the last bit they just stuck onto. They just were like, people, yeah, but, but, but I don't know. I apologise to any Welsh listeners for my pronunciation, by the way. But um, it's uh, it is a it is the place where my my godfather lives. So, it's fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's, sweet, it's, sweet garage. Sweet, sweet Been place. going for in excess of forty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably fifty actually. Actually, I don't because then uh, then my uncle Owen started. He when he retired, he had one of those nice little retirement side hustles, delivering cars for the local Audi garage. Oh, and he became an Audi man. 
Well, true. I think it's the other way around. He became an Audi man. He got to know the local Audi garage, and when he retired, they went, oh, you know, you're looking for a bit of work there, Alwyn. You want to help us deliver in a few weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, isn't it? Isn't it? There's yeah. lovely. So, uh, yeah, that's... 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 Uh, that's oh, no, so that's, you know, getting into a 535 of the 80s after being in a Talbot Slara and going, why isn't there absolutely raucous tap-it noise all the time? <laughs> oh, you, you like, just couldn't believe how quiet a normal quiet car was. was. Do you know what? Thinking about that, that must have been... Actually, I think maybe he bought a, an E34 new... And e34 when it was oh. when it was new because that car only came out in 87 i think and by 1988 my parents had bought a peugeot 405 so mm. they love a bit of the uh, psa yeah they PSA. did didn't they this is so but this Chrysler is the talbot group a great example of brand loyalty yeah that my dad was a chrysler man i don't know why a roots group man. well and as was mine Avenger, yeah. So same, the same gateway yeah. drug for both it, This our was parents. meant to be Richard, it's, but yeah, we, we no. both we, we <laughs> both got indoctrinated. But it's a shame my dad's no longer with us because I feel like him and your dad would get on very well because both engineers both love a roots group car. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's just like, just like, I mean, we've got at least on? half an hour of chat. Did there. your dad um, smoke a pipe in the seventies? No. Uh, okay. No. Okay. No, he's never. Uh, what music was he down with? What tapes did you have in the car? Uh, my dad just liked uh, classical <clears throat> music and Welsh choirs. My dad liked cl- well, he still likes classical music. Does he? Yeah, yeah. Not into pop music. Uh, no, not really. No. no, very, very trad in that. It's a respect. classic parent dynamic, isn't it? Your dad's not so fussed, but your mum's into pop. Oh, your mum, mum, Abba. Pop of the day. Mum was yeah, just well, saturated in Abba. Abba. My dad would tolerate Abba. I've yeah. told this story before about touring Denmark in in my dad's purple. I can't uh, believe you went all the way to Denmark. We didn't drive all the way there. We got the ferry across the sea bit. But then <laughs> the um, but the only cassette in the car that was acceptable to the whole family was ABBA. So we had just two weeks of ABBA on loop. And Amazing. nobody complained. And I still love ABBA. So that's that's the power of ABBA. But, poor. Uh, poor. 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 Um, the, uh, now I can't remember what we were talking about. Oh, yes, no, our dad's and Roots Group. But my dad then, for some reason, after he had minis. Yeah. Oh, then Cortina's. Yeah. And then went to Avengers. And then he was going to go back to Cortina's, but there was a strike. He ordered a Cortina estate when I was little because he needed a more practical car. A f- so he... Okay. So whereas my family went for the Avenger estate when they mm. became parents, your dad was going to go to the Blue Oval. I tell a lie. He went Avenger, Avenger, Alpine. Okay. But then I think he thought he needed even more room in the boot than the hatch could allow. Yeah. So he ordered a Cortina estate... And then there was a strike at Dagenham. Yeah. And they couldn't say when the Cortina estate would be made yeah. and delivered. The lots of smoking men in bell bottoms yeah. shouting. Yeah. And well, was... this would have been the late... No, this was actually the dawn of the 80s, I think. Because then... This would have been run out Cortina, possibly. Run out. Getting towards the run out, I think. And he cancelled the order and he went and bought the, the purple Solara. So I don't know where the practicality bit suddenly evaporated. And he went, oh, I'll get a saloon. I'll get something less versatile. Yeah. But he... he um, Cause I, of course, the Alpine had the hatch, didn't it? I mean, honestly, if you tune into this for, for talking about ultra-shit cars... <laughs> I mean, we are... We, are, we got you back. We are at the coalface. Shitting heck, though. Wait a minute. I'm getting my timeline all screwed up. I can't remember how this... this but there was a point. So my dad worked for Esso. Yeah. Esso had a company car scheme, if you were a certain grade, which my dad was... So he was entitled to a car, but they didn't like lease you a car or whatever been the system in those days. They gave you some money to go and buy to it. go and buy a car, and you were allowed to top up if you wanted to. And amazing, but it had to be. They had this insistence that it had to be a four door saloon in case you ever had to drive customers around. Right, um, and my dad was a bit like, but I don't because that's not what my job is. So ever, ever, but that's fine and then his colleague Ron successfully argued that because he definitely didn't have to drive customers around he could have an Audi coupe and that's what he got yeah but I think my dad suddenly went I'm going to get a Solara and then he realised with his money if he topped up a little bit he could have a Tagara and he was going to get a Tagara treat yourself nice realised it wouldn't fit in our garage yeah because they were wider weren't they so we deeply went to unsuccessful yeah, car. Yeah, deeply <laughs> unsuccessful car. But, but for Tagara money, he yeah. got a Solara GLS with, as it turns out, a shit gearbox. 
<laughs> so, but that was, I was gutted we couldn't have a cigar. This is my childhood is oh. sort of punctuated by me trying to persuade my dad to buy deeply unsuccessful is Chrysler that... products. Can we have a rancho, dad? No. Nah. Can we have a cigar? Maybe. Oh, no, it won't fit in the garage. Well, I, uh, today, mm. and this stems from a conversation we had at several casts ago about Daihatsu Terios is being no. very narrow. <laughs> oh, okay. I remember the narrow car, but go on, yeah. But so on the road today, um, I saw not one but two Terioses. Oh. In identical colours. And I one of in between the two, I pulled into the services for a toilet and a coffee. Yeah. And I thought it was the same one and then realised the spare wheel cover <laughs> on one of them said Daihatsu. The spare wheel cover on the other one said Terios oh. diagonally. Oh. And it reminded me of, and I'm going to have to say sorry to the listener, I think they DM'd us on Instagram, and I've forgotten your name. Oh, I can't be doing with the but DMs they, on Instagram, far too difficult. It, they, we, I just, you get buried. But yeah. what they, 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 they said, listening to your, your Terios chat the other week, <laughs> said... They are the angel fish of the car world. Oh, yes, I saw <laughs> I realised it's the perfect description. Yeah. When they're coming towards you, they're so narrow, you almost yeah, you don't go, see them. And then when they turn, they go, oh, it's a terrier. <laughs> 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 it, can we think of they any are. other perfect angel fi- automotive angel fishes? Well, no, see, because I... Uh, but <laughs> It's true, though, isn't it? It's really it made is me true, Google. yeah. The um, the original Morgan Aero Eight though I thought is a sort of is a narrow faced car in that its face is now too narrow for its head. <laughs> it's like a hammerhead shark almost. It's like this woman that I sometimes used to see around um, in near where I used to live, who I used to, in my head she was just the small faced woman. Small face. Small faced woman. It's like all of her features were sort of clustered towards the middle of her head. What she looked like? You know, kids have got those apps where you can hover a phone over someone yeah. while you're filming them, and it, it makes them either really fat or really thin yeah. or really strange. Yeah, or just, just have a. But yeah, the small faced woman. Oh wow! She's just, not, 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 not like sort of like freakish looking, but it just went. Your face is quite small for you. It's all in board. Well, your features are all too clustered together. It's like Bentley Molson kind of. Bit Bentley Molson, but I think more, more sort of Morgan Aero Eight. Aero Eight or um, Molsani face. There's something else that's like that. Inboardy features. Inboard features, yeah. Yeah. Like inboard brakes. Maybe there's a weight saving benefit to her face. <laughs> she can turn quicker. <laughs> yeah, she's got a She fa- can. Her, the unsprung weight of her face is is actually quite impressive. Yeah. So Citroen 2 CV front brakes, uh, oh, yes, Alpha, are, Alpha Sud, inboard discs. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're just hugging the block. Aston's used to have inboards at the back, I think, didn't they? Yeah. For some reason or other. I don't know why. And Rover P6. Oh, it's weight, isn't it? It's Jags. Weight. I think it is, yeah. 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 And it, it's a complete Brian to change the, to do mm. routine maintenance. Oh, I'll just change the rear pads. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> right. You're going to be there for two days. Have you got a four post lift? No. No. Well, you Best are going to be, you're be outside week. your house for days and days and days. <laughs> and it's a terrible, terrible job. Well, yeah, because it's going, okay, so this part that needs to be maintained and replaced at regular intervals, should we tuck it away? Yeah, put it yeah, away. Just tuck it away. Just just send it away. away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an awful idea. Yeah. Okay, well, um, what else am I going to say? I, 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 no, just <laughs> I wrote something down somewhere to chat to I wrote down, this is not relevant at all, but all I was amusing mm. myself the other day thinking of off-brand sitcoms. Like, you know, like you used to get knock-off cars that are like a Citroen ZX or something? Yes. And, uh, but they're made in China. And, oh, yeah, uh, we used to get all those. Mm, like little... little fangs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, those... And, they just and of course now it's, it seems almost hilarious because the Chinese car industry is in fact oh a powerhouse so yeah and it's just doing its own thing <laughs> yeah, perfectly it's, well but um it's, it's, but yeah for some reason it suddenly popped into my head that like you'd go to China and there'd be a sitcom that starred Del Man and Uncle Arthur <laughs> Del the Man yeah you go hang on isn't this only fools and horses but then you, you kids call donkeys and idiots or something and you go <laughs> I feel like this is a rip off. I can't quite put my finger on the familiarity here, but it is very it's familiar. very familiar. Roger, you plonkhead. <laughs> what the heck? Um, anyway. Oh, uh, and the only thing I wrote down, which is from weeks ago now, is that did you, you, we both saw those pictures that uh, Chris Harris put online. He was filming with Tiff yes. for Top Gear. Yeah. And Tiff was sporting on presumably what was an absolutely Baltically cold oh, day. Oh, it would be an incredibly <laughs> cold day. Carpaccio of leather jackets. Oh, who is wearing, oh, the thinnest so, of slices. We can only urge you leather. to keep watching uh, the new Top Gear when it's, I presume I, it for the, I don't know, is, it, is this, I thought this series had finished. Anyway, at some point on Top Gear, Tiff will be there. Well, amazingly, yeah, and it, Monkey, Harris, Chris, 
he he messaged me and asked me for Tiff's phone number. And I was like, what, you don't have his number? What, after they filmed together? Yeah, after they'd filmed together. Oh. He obviously, he either was going to say, I'm very sorry for what happened, yeah, dot, dot, sorry, dot. Sorry, whatever, yes. whatever did happen. <laughs> or, or it was great, Tiff, let's have another drink together at some time. Yeah. Uh, with the Carpaccio of Leather Jacket. Well, which best is of luck of, with that, Tiff, by the way, because I've been trying to go for a pint with Chris Monkey Harris for in Bristol for about the last six months, yeah. and the twat's ghosting me. So <laughs> I'm trying not to take it personally. But you ghosty. Seriously. Um... So yes, the Carpaccio may be on the telly. It may have been on. Maybe I'm. I'm well, maybe the feature. The feature was all so. about the, the the huge, colourful history of the motorsport jacket. <laughs> 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 And it would involve, he starts off turning up with his usual Hugo Boss ultra thin stitch leather jacket, which is tasteful mm. and doesn't get in your way when you're driving because it doesn't, ah, ru- doesn't yeah. ruffle up. Doesn't add weight. Doesn't add doesn't weight. Doesn't ruffle up. No, yeah, okay. but of course, as soon as you get outside into the wind chill of an airfield or a test track, <laughs> it's like, bloody hell, I am not equipped for this. So, <laughs> so you either you need a motorsport fleece. The history of the motorsport jacket, though, would be amazing. Because you go that's a, sort of that's a book, Richard. The thirties and forties flying jackets, flying jackets, big, sheepskin, sheepskin collar, leather, big, yeah. bulky. They yeah. always make people look like they've got big upper body, don't they? Sort of I would love it because I am not a sort of a broad gentleman, but I don't think it's a flattering big upper body. You just look like just you know one of those. What do you look like? We just look like you like pies a lot. You think it bulks up? It just, you just look like an ostrich because you've got a big sort of round upper body and then spindly legs. <laughs> you think your ostriches awesome. have just got windscreen wipers for legs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really thin old car windscreen wipers that hinge backwards. Um, yeah. And um, um, So you'd go from sheepskin into... When did it start becoming sort of man-made fibres or...? Well, I think you might, in the 50s, have got a sort of cotton... Overall, or type well, or like a sort of yeah, like a cotton <clears throat> kind of not a baseball jacket, but a sort of like a racing overall with us, maybe a stripe. Yeah, which I've got a few of those. They're mm. all inflammable. I t- tend not to wear them near cars. Infl- uh, why is inflammable and flammable the same thing? <laughs> I think so inflammable. Confusing. Inflammable's like stage three flammable. Is it? So, I'm yeah. sure someone listening who's maybe a inflammable fire means you just if you or, think of fire near it or you Bluetooth yeah. near it, it'll just in, catch fire. Infl- but inflammable would sound just like. I suppose unflammable, but that's not a word. Un- <laughs> no, un- unflammable means it can't be set on fire, doesn't it? Or is that flame retardant? I think I don't think it's like unflammable. Inflammable and flammable. Flammable. Mean the same. <laughs> I'm, un- I'm unflammable. Words become un- it's become meaningless it's, now. It's confusing the more you uh, say it. It's meaning... But uh, anyway, but the, the, the they're very. Yes, you're right. They're, they're riskily. They are very, flame. very polyestery, yeah. nylony. I think back in the fifties, they'd have been cotton, though, wouldn't they? Because yeah. polyester was probably in its infancy then. That would have been sixties. Then yes, and you get your satiny, very sheeny. sheeny. I've got a few of those, which are great for sort of lightweight rain, as good mm. as a wind cheater. Yeah, uh, usually with the drawstrings around the waist. Yeah. <laughs> you know the ones I mean. <laughs> oh. I'd like a drawstring. Have you ever extracted a drawstring from a pair of drawstring garments? Yeah. Sort of just using sheer sort of will and easing knitting, it back around. I, I used a, an old knitting needle. <laughs> if I'd had an old knitting needle, but I, yeah, I had a pair of running shorts, lost the, lost the drawstring the other day, eased it back. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing more eased, satisfying. I eased back the it drawstring. Took, it took me about five hours, it but just I did like, it. It sounds like some sort of home medical um, <clears throat> procedure. I just eased back just the drawstring. to the back so I can ease back your drawstring. Um, you teased it back out. Teased, I teased it. That's what I did. I teased it out. Teased like it. a snake charmer. Well, because the thing is, I sort of got so far, and I was like, I reckon I've gone about halfway. I'm not giving up now. And yeah. so I got the bastard thing out. Um, anyway, yes. Then in the 70s, still satiny. But I think still satiny. Different cut, maybe yes. slightly. Would have been a tighter cut in the 70s. Or quilted. Oh, yeah, quilting. early days of quilting. Mm. And that's when the rally scene probably got bigger. Yeah. Because rally in the... I'm going to say rally in the 80s would it, was at its peak of popularity, would yeah, you say? Yeah, but that's when we... I think we'd have brought in technical anorak at that point. Tech anorak. <laughs> Tanorak. Ta- Ta- <laughs> Ta- the, the motorsport <laughs> technical... Tanorak. Tanorak. So you think the early days of puffer in the... Oh, in not the, puffer. I'm thinking just... Quilt. You know, sort of big... 
Sleeping bag. Well, you know, like, yeah, or oh, maybe. You know, like Tiff's famous emergency Skoda kit. Skoda, Skoda <laughs> that's a Tekarak, isn't it? Cause He's it's... never thanked me for that other one which Skoda kindly sent to oh, his. Yeah. I gave Skoda his but home does address. Does he know that you instigated, though? You were the facilitator. Uh, oh, I'm sending him a text going, you should expect something from Skoda from the po- in the post. <laughs> um, so he did think it was some sort of weird stalker. <laughs> and thank you again to Skoda for sending him a, a modern day technical. Yeah. And those are the ones that are almost neoprene. Yes. So a lot of today's motorsport oh, jackets are, are thin looking, mm. but they are warm mm. and they're mm. obviously wind resistant. Yeah. And they have quite a complementary, yeah, cuffs. The cuffs are quite, they're adjustable. Yeah. Uh, like, a, like a rubber I'm um, sort yeah. of you know Velcro-y effect yeah. and they've always got quite a good kind of welcome to my island Mr Bond collar I find yes they have haven't they yeah because yeah. They, they, they tailor the figure well especially if you get them in black they're often matte black or satin yeah. grey <laughs> Porsche they do a mean they exquisitely do a mean tasteful Exquisite. yes oh my god a Porsche a Porsche um, technical tailored fit tailored fit neoprene jacket bang up to date 2022 yeah. spec yeah 23 model year jacket I think they should Ooh. be a Walter Roll would wear one oh yeah well, wouldn't he? yeah good shoulders yeah on it. just sort of neatly tailored yeah It'd be a... there should be a motorsport <clears throat> jacket amnesty <laughs> where <laughs> well, where, where about... you're not allowed to own a motor <clears throat> a, a, a manufacturer jacket if you own that car so you have to have an no. amnesty so if, say Richard's got a Subaru and I've got a Mitsubishi I can't wear a rally art jacket oh. okay I'm not allowed bold yeah so we have to switch it up mm. because it's all about embracing other people's yes other cultures other cultures other cultures, <laughs> other yeah. other yeah. cultures. <laughs> so the rich culture the guy in the Daihatsu Terios hasn't got oh, a Daihatsu puffer on yeah he's got a Land Rover Freelander Mark 1 yes he has <laughs> You know so, what I mean, though? They always, they always seem to have like sort of folds and flappy bits. There's, oh, sort of, there's yeah. too much going like on. Like a fishing jacket. They've got zips so many. and poppers, and uh, you just go, there's a lot going on here. Loads of internal no- no- netting <laughs> going on. Yeah. I'm going to have to take a day off to work out how to use this jacket. It's yeah. just it's too busy. <laughs> Would you have in your inside pocket a helmet net? Like a motorsport <laughs> helmet <laughs> net. So it looks like you've got an absurdly large cyst on your right hand side. You go, no, 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 I'm carrying my jacket and my inside pocket in the net because I had that I've got this bloody skiing jacket thing that I wore to go walking in the lakes the other week and that's got I've still I've had that for about 20 years and I'm still finding pockets on it I didn't know <laughs> were there it's it's insane but yeah that's the, like practical cars with cubby holes that you find mm. several years into ownership of the car yes and you just go shit I didn't know you could keep pound coins in that yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, that's for the toll booth that, I, that we never, ever use yeah. in the UK. That's where you keep the card for that. Oh, yes. What cars? cars there's like some cars that have that. Is it Mercs have got those? You've got the little clip in the windscreen. It's that's a Volkswagen. That's a big Skoda thing. Skoda, Skoda VW thing. Yeah, I think the Passat, too, yeah. Passat people like that. Passander people. Because mm. they're always parking in municipal car parks. Well, though, it's, that's the car equivalent of the person that has a biro in their top pocket <laughs> on their shirt and they keep a biro at all times even in a world of touchscreen digital signing ability yeah. all that stuff there's still a yeah yeah it's probably an engineering thing in I fact it's, it's probably our yeah. dad thing yeah 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 isn't I, it I think so. my dad used to carry several pens around of different colours you're never going to regret that. No, we go a black and a well, red. Well, unless they leak, and then you are going to... I think he did have a leaky regret. pen once. <laughs> right did. off a shirt. You had a leaky With pen. a leaky bick incident. But, uh, yeah, which... Um... I sat on some food in a car recently. <laughs> 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 And I didn't know I'd done it. And what was, did you sit on? It was it was um, <laughs> it was some flapjack which did oh. look like shit. <laughs> I, find, what, no. I was driving for ages looking for it. Going, I, <laughs> I am, I'm, going, I'm certain I bought some flapjack. I can't friggin' find it anywhere. Where's that damn flapjack? I'm, I'm a little bit peckish. <laughs> so as you're driving along, you're sort of smoothing your hands along yeah, the seats because yeah. I'm keeping my eyes on the road. But it's dark. <laughs> the old, yeah, I'm sort of fingering feel. the squab. I'm fingering the passenger squab. Like that. I'm doing it with the seat I'm sat on there. I'm fingering the squab going, where's that damn flapjack? Is it gone down on the floor? Feeling the floor. Couldn't find it. And then I get out of the car after about an hour and a half. And there is <laughs> God, the most destroyed. The flat flapjack. Honestly. Honestly. It just... It, it, do you know what it looked like? It looked like a used tea bag. <laughs> That's what it looked like. 
I know this is weird and niche, but I find <laughs> I find people accidentally sitting on food. One of the funniest <laughs> things in the world. Really? Well, because it's so, it's such a rare thing. And it's, it's just something incredibly, because it's like you do not want to sit on food, A. B, how did you sit on the food? And I also remember once, uh, the guy who used to studio direct Top Gear, Brian Klein, who was a famously clumsy, accident-prone man, once came shambling into our little sort of green room at the studio. Uh, to join us for the read through of the studio script first thing in the morning and we always had there was catering at the studio bacon sandwiches so everyone would go and grab a bacon sandwich and we'd sit down read the script Brian came in a bit late rushed in and just sat down and just sat on a bacon sandwich <laughs> <laughs> had, it been, had it been hosed down with ketchup I think it might have been <laughs> all I remember is he then someone went Brian you just sat on a ham and sandwich and he's like what oh fuck 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 Stand ham up. and sandwich I think it was ham and sandwich they just sort of put down on the sofa for a second while he was getting his script out and it was oh. and Brian stood up again and all I remember is that then it was so undignified because basically one slice of bread had stuck to his arse and then the rest of it sort of dropped away but <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's just... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, this is just, that's I, bet I can't be the only person that has, gone, yeah. that has spent a considerable amount of time in the driver's seat so, on a, accidentally sitting on top of a foodstuff. <laughs> I can't believe I'm the only person. There's been, uh, there's been numerous... I've, there would have been crisps. Did that I? just ends up turning yeah. into powder. Oh, yeah, then you've just got... Yeah, and if you've got crisps. it on an Alcantara seat, that's mm. going to take... You need an archaeological team to get all those grains out. Well, it's like, I'm talking of going to the Top Gear studio. When the early days, my uh, colleague Jim Wiseman, who's a mate of ours still... Is sweet, sweet, sweet guy. Sweet, sweet guy. Lovely guy. Uh, he and I always used to share a car down to Dunsfold, and we had this tradition where we would stop at a petrol station just uh, on the outskirts of London and get a coffee. And Jim is a, a was... Uh, a fiend for pastries he loves a pastry oh really but sometimes he'd get like a pan of chocolate oh a flaky thing flaky thing with bits of chocolate and quite often it always seemed to coincide with when I had a press car with like cream leather seats he'd suddenly go oh 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 dear oh it looks like there's been a dirty protest and a bit of chocolate would have dropped down between yep. his legs and then he'd have realised it later on through the journey where it had nicely sort of melted into the leather and I'd be like oh fuck Jim you've got to, have to clean it up yeah, that was where have I talked about this on the show before that w when we would go to that petrol station one of us would get the coffee machine going and it was the job of the other one to go over to the magazine racks because oh, by pornography well no it had an abnormally yes yeah, so you have told about this pre-screening the covers and we would do read the headlines off the porn mags in the style of Jeremy Paxman at the end of Newsnight you know he used to do the headlines in a very dismiss dismissive way so you know just go razzle uh, lick my titties and knave go with I'm hot and wet for your cock uh, that's it that's all we've got time for this <laughs> <laughs> it just kept us entertained every Wednesday morning. Uh, I, I'd like you to leave voicemail messages for me like this on a <laughs> weekly basis, if that's okay. It really pet oh, me I was up. Gonna, have I, I can't remember if I've saved it. That, that voice <laughs> note you left me. Well, oh, which you, one? When you started, you suddenly just went and now a word from our sponsor and started doing an impression of your old flatmate going, <laughs> doing Prelude 2.2, yeah? Oh, yeah, I think I did do that one. I think I might have saved it. If I have, I'll play it out at the end of this um this podcast after yeah. the music. Is that when you messaged me about um, about, uh, about the, the listener from Australia who saw a man walk into a toilet and use the Dyson hand dryer oh, yeah. <laughs> as, as a urinal? Yes. And I've got it here. It says, "Hi, this is from this is from Kevin Riley in Brisbane." Mm. Hi, guys. Not sure about the MJT. He's referring to the Mitsubishi Jet Tail, of oh. course. But on the subject of hand dryers, I used the public toilet at Brisbane International Airport in Australia. As I was leaving, a gentleman walked in, unzipped, and proceeded to take a big slash in the mm -hmm. Dyson hand dryer. You should have seen the look on his face when I tapped him on the shoulder and indicated that the urinals were next door in the <laughs> other room. Wouldn't want to be the next person using that hand dryer. Oh, the mist of piss. Oh, piss mist. <sighs> you would not know. It's a proper. You get. You get ricochet. Oh it's God! Not, of course, of course. I mean, it's a it's a Dyson. But also, that's the thing. Wouldn't it just go off uh, as you would? <laughs> oh God! It would. Oh, imagine <laughs> no, a powerful it would just motor. Suddenly, start misting piss into your face. That would be serious piss, man. <coughs> wouldn't it? It'd be like those really oh amazing when Volkswagen redesigned the washer jets in the Passat. Oh yeah, and they were they incredibly were efficient. Fine mist, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would be that, but urine. Yeah. Oh God. Well, that's a very on-topic and tasteful note on which to wrap this up. Yes, uh, perfect. Not just this podcast, but the podcast for this year. Oh, uh, gosh. Because 
um, next week is Christmas. Right, actually, it's Boxing Day next Monday, and um, we're uh, not working. We're not working, so no. you know, screw you. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, there'll be a, there will be some kind of podcast on the second in the new year, but this is uh, Smith and Sniff signing out for uh, 2022. Um, wishing you a glorious Christmas and a prosperous, a phosphorus New Year. A phosphorus New Year, yes, yes. Uh, before we go, of course, I do have. Uh, three things to tell you. Uh, they are one, Johnny has a solo YouTube channel. It's called The Corrugate Flake Show, in which Johnny attempts to ripple an already heavily textured chocolate bar for no readily apparent reason. Or you could watch The Late Break Show, which has got lots of excellent videos about cars and people who love them. Uh, second thing I've got to tell you is that we are hugely grateful to everyone who's listened to this podcast throughout this year. Thank you ever so much uh, yep. for your support and your loyalty to what is frankly a lot of nonsense and uh, everyone who's written in sorry if we haven't replied to you or read out your thing on air we do read everything I promise whether it's through the Patreon or uh, through the email hello at smithandsniff.com or even through the Instagram DMs much though they vex me enormously but you read them don't you I try to but it's like fighting the tide Mm. we get an enormous amount Um, but thank you I don't want to sound like a disgruntled thank you uh, for well thanks for everything really Um, yeah and uh, the third thing I've got to tell you is that um, you know EMF's unbelievable I do massive song great uh, it was top ten all around the world number one in the US number three in the UK it was number one in America it was it was huge I didn't huge 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 and all that time and it's still played on the radio yeah and no one ever mentions that it has quite audibly got into it in it <laughs> started again it's quite audibly got in it a sample of someone shouting what the fuck oh yeah it does have you noticed this yeah i'd never spotted it and once yeah. you know it's there it's actually andrew dice clay the comedian it's him but that's that but the but is it's it's really obvious yeah i and, love that song and that song yeah it was a u.s number one with and swear in it you referenced that blimmin album the other day and i've got that i bought that schubert dip schubert dip great what, album was that 91 Yes, I think so. Bloody yeah. love that album. It's a good album. So, <coughs> excuse me. You, you're going into limp home mode. I think I am. Yeah. So going to throw up a fault code. <laughs> yeah. What was what did Bindu say now? V- vocal the, fault code. Vocal folk, uh, Unexpected value. That's what I've got. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. Yeah. Of a claggy throat. Um, <clears throat> yeah. No. Schubert Dip is a mega album. So I was listening to it while I was cooking dinner the other the other week, and it's um it still stands up. It's one of those albums where you go, there's not really a duff track on here. They're all solid yeah. and. Good. But they never played apart from Unbelievable. No, because I quite like Lies. Lies was great. I really like that. I probably prefer to Unbelievable, which got kind of a bit played to death, yeah. didn't it? I Believe is good. I Believe's good. And Children. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the opening which track. Which opens... The, well, see, this is what I said on Twitter, is the opening track, but not in my brain it's not, because I listened to that album so much in 91, but recorded onto tape from a CD by my <laughs> schoolmate and well-known fuckwit, Stephen Annis. <laughs> Stephen Annis failed to tell me that he'd got his CD player on shuffle so the track order was completely different what a turd well I don't think he did it deliberately he was just a fuckwit I mean he was just famously a fuckwit so um, anyway if you're listening Steve yeah you. sorry if you are I've never met you but <clears throat> you're a lovely guy oh, shit I've got a school reunion next year so have you yeah, stop not bad mouthing former classmates um, uh, yeah if well, you it. get a chance if you're listening to this before New Year's Day um, is that going to be a possibility I did listen to this before New Year's Day. Well, almost certainly it's going out on the 19th of December, so... Oh, OK, brilliant. In which case, shout on New Year's Eve, if you're going out on the town and all that, mm-hmm. shout on that side of things really loudly in someone's <laughs> ear, just as the clock strikes midnight. <laughs> or, and, or, or happy New Year and all that! Yes. And just, like, really, like, just... Like wave at them and point at them at point blank range, <laughs> like Larry pissed people do. Okay, good advice there. Yeah, really good advice. Um, well, you, that's you, that then. Um, we will return next year with more of this, more live shows. We're going to do some more of those, more new merch. Yeah, we've got it. It's it's in the wings, and probably more chat about uh, a mist of urine blowing across an Australian <laughs> lavatory because you know why change a winning formula uh, but until then thank you ever so much for listening bye 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 don't fuck about yeah go out Friday night hit it hard Moroccan black yeah fucked before you've even gone out and like drunk a thing then get your best gear on 
E46 convertible, yeah. Don't drink before you drive, yeah. Just do drugs, then they won't, they will not detect it, yeah. They will not know how fucked you are. And then come back from the club, yeah. Everybody gathering, Hennessy, potato waffles, all that shit. Giving it like big. And then don't sleep. Like never sleep. Sleeping is pussy shit, yeah. Don't need it. Just carry on through, yeah.